Hey everybody, it's Matt. I wanted to make a quick video showing kind of the installation process for the QA1 anti-hop bars for GM A-body 68 to 72 cars. This is my 70 SS Chevelle that I've restored. It has the 12 bolt rear end in the back. <clears throat> if you look at this picture, this is the Actual, these are the actual anti-hop bars that I got. And if you look at them right there in the photo, they are different on each side because uh, they're <clears throat> only go on there one way. I'll include the link to that at the bottom. And there's also instructions on there and on QA1's website. This is kind of just a quick photo. It shows you that my rear end, uh, this is actually after installation, but that's exactly where it was beforehand. Uh, the ride height has not changed at all. This is the reason that I needed these. Uh, after doing quite a bit of research, which was from like forums from 2006 or so, really nobody, nobody's, there's not a ton of people, you know, doing these Chevelles now. They've been doing them so long. Um, I have blocks in the back of my rear end under my springs that's very crudely circled right there to give my car a little bit of that rake. I also have drop spindles in front and what those blocks end up doing is changing the pinion angle. So what I found was that if you raise the rear of the car then the anti-hop bars, there's a couple different brands but I like these the best, the anti-hop bars are the solution to get rid of the wheel hop. If your car is lowered you should look into something like ladder bars or adjustable LCAs, something to that effect. Now the instructions on this do say that you can use factory upper control arms. You do not have to buy adjustables. Once I got in there and looked at it, I thought, no way, but I made it work. So if you look at this next photo, you can see I've got my upper control arms up there. I uh, probably need to do some touch-up paint on there. And the QA1 anti-hop bars are installed. I put it, I've got everything on the ground, uh, it's sitting right, I tightened it up, no issues. <clears throat> Here's another photo that just kind of shows the installation. That was another thing why I'm making this video, is there weren't any really good installation photos or videos or, you know, hey, um, here's how this is done, here's what it should look like, that type of thing. The, the instructions are kind of unclear. So one of the things the instructions tells you is that it's critical that you support the pinion angle and you do not allow that to change during installation. Well, that change in the pinion angle is the reason that I have such bad wheel hop and, and can't dump the clutch or, or spin the tires or anything. Um, it also says that each rear end is probably going to be different and you might have to do some clearancing on yours. And you'll see. So the easiest way that I found to do this was to remove the upper control arm from the rear end, get a ball joint press in there, get that bushing out of the rear end housing, uh, bolt the QA1 anti-hop bar in where it goes right there on the housing, uh, just kind of snug, not very tight, where I can still move it and rotate it if I need to, figure out where I need to go to drill, on that webbing. So you need at least a quarter inch of clearance on that webbing where you drill that little skinny bolt through. What I mean by that is a quarter inch from the edge of that webbing, not from the top or the bottom. That hot bar, it can touch, it can touch that edge of the webbing. It can touch the top, the bottom, wherever it lands, when it's in that mount at the top there, that's just where it's gonna land. You may have to clearance some to make room and get that quarter inch of clearance from the edge of the webbing because if you drill any closer than a quarter inch of that webbing you're very likely to crack it or damage it if it puts any stress on the on the end of it. Here's another photo uh, of the uh, the way the car sits right now. That's basically it. You drill a couple holes, you know, you get some bushings out of there it's a really easy install. It's just kind of a hard area to work on unless you, you do it on a lift like I did and you kind of got to support the rear end. Um, I would recommend getting your exhaust the heck out of there before you even try because it, it's constantly in the way. It's annoying. One thing you may also have to do is uh, that brake line, that flex line that goes from the frame rail to the top of the rear end for your rear brakes. That may get tight. Uh, I didn't have that issue. 
And the only other thing that I've seen is on El Caminos, since you're raising the height of that uh, control arm mount back there, sometimes they run uh, issues into them hitting the floor. Uh, a Chevelle, Malibu, something like that, you're not even going to come close. If you guys have any questions, uh, drop me a comment. Like I said, I just didn't see any good videos or anything out there to help with this. So I kind of got on there, figured it out, disregarded the instructions as usual, and now I can do burnouts. So far, so good. Thanks for watching.